Hello, hi, this is uh, Tim Fahey, and um, I'm the teacher for the digital tools class, one of them anyway, for the fall, and I did this past spring. Um, I'm here to kind of talk about how to demonstrate how to use the video tools for your classrooms. Um, there are a number of different uh, applications out there that you can use to record your screen, including Zoom, uh, including uh, Loom, L-O-O-M, and also Screencast-O-Matic. Um, you, have, you have also other ones that, such as um, ScreenFlow, and and um, and sometimes you can also use, if, if you like, um, if you're on a Mac, uh, QuickTime. So there's a number of different re uh, screen recording software. The most important thing is to make sure, number one, uh, that you can record your audio, which is here, and of course you have good video. Uh, also, secondarily, you have to make sure you be able to record the audio from the computer. Um, sometimes it's easy to find, sometimes it's not. In this particular case, um, Screencast-O-Matic says, in this case, you'll have to upgrade to capture the computer audio. So, for instance, if you're going to run a video from YouTube, you'll have to upgrade, and I think it's $10 a month. Um, so, anyway, I'm going to give it a demonstration of uh, Adobe InDesign. Uh, I have up on my screen currently um, my um, brother's brochure that we worked on the other day, and I'm going to be recording the process that we talk about here. Uh, number one, um, Adobe InDesign is a um, uh, page layout software for professionals. It's uh, it's used. It's been around for you know at least twenty years, and page layout software has started with things like PageMaker and Quark, and then this particular one. In any case, uh, the benefit of a page layout software, unlike um, all the other software out there for such as Photoshop and Illustrator and Word and others, is that this is an assembly tool. You put everything on it, and it and it creates your document. Um, it's, it handles topography extremely well, um, and actually you don't have to worry about um, creating anything other than laying things out. For instance, if you put a photo here, you can move it around, you know, uh, you, can, you can crop it, you know, things like that easily. And it just sits right in, on the page as you want. This shows a preview mode showing the, uh, the, the boundaries of the page. This particular one is on preview. Normal, it'll show you what's on the sides as well. So you can actually slip this off a little bit if you want to show what's on the side. Um, like I said, it handles topography very well. Double click on it to, um, um, you know, change the, uh, uh, the, the, the words. Um, you know, you can, you can uh, up here on the left-hand side, I'm using Helvetica. You just select the words here. It's oblique. Um, and then you can change the the the, uh, the type font size from 10 point to whatever we want. Uh, these are the point sizes which are given by the computer as part of the industry standards. Typically, the the fonts you need to use are things that are readable according to the audience that you're dealing with. Uh, uh, 10 points relatively uh, small, but it's a readable font that you probably would see, say, in the Washington Post. Um, typically, you want to, if you have people who are visually impaired, you need to, you know, accommodate that to be able to make the fonts a little bit bigger, and the contrast is important against the page. So I, I particularly like uh, using lights uh, and bold fonts to be able to help differentiate. Uh, the toolbar here. This is the. Selection tool, it's easy to move things around with that. You can go Command Z, or you can go up here to Command Z to undo the item. Um, this is a what they call a direct selection tool, where if you, you know, even though that you can select this direction, you know, and actually crop the page um, or move, move the page, this direct selection tool can actually accommodate uh, the, the visual outside the area. So for instance, if, if it's if it's a detail that you want to get in or you want to recrop this, it just kind of, you just actually click on it and you'll get more detail out of it. If you use the direct selection tool for topography, it's a, it's a bit different. For the most part, you're okay to use it, but it's usually better to use the direct, direct selection tool. 
Uh, this is a the a page tool, um, which in um, uh, which you know for the most part, I, I, I is really just to re reshape the page, which actually you wouldn't want to do for the most part. But uh, this particular page is eight and a half by eleven. We go down to the to the file menu under the document setup, and you can see that this is set up as eight and a half by eleven inches um, with margins. And you can actually have facing pages or not facing pages. You can actually add more pages here. Um, you can get pages for web, print, and also mobile. Um, you can preview it, but you know, for the most part, it's all, all, all good as it is. So anyway, um, you could also import graphics like uh, this is a logo, right? And you, and you can go up under the links tool, which is right here. The links shows you the links of this particular page. And if you wanted to, for some reason, edit it, you can even edit it right inside here by clicking on the original, which actually will open up Adobe Illustrator. And, you know, for some reason, if you, you wanted to change the color um, for some reason, you know, you just kind of select that and then you can select the color and then, and then maybe you just close it out. Um, it, it, it'll want you to save it, but I'm not going to save it, but it would update it automatically here. So similarly, um, this particular page uh, is obviously the font is covering up that other, other word. So I brought this over. Oh yeah, one other thing you could do is also you can put hyperlinks in here for PDF. So you can just double click on, like say the URL, you come under the interactive or hyperlinks or whatever however they they call it let's see it's interactive i think yeah here and they call it uh hyperlinks hyperlinks and so what you do is you just you know basically confirm it you type it in here make sure you put the correct address even if it means you copy paste and then you hit return and it, it puts the hyperlink in it so when you actually go to a pdf and create a pdf you'll actually um you know, we'll just call this the test for the sake of uh, that. And I'm going to put it in a particular folder. And then I'm going to say hyperlinks. Uh, you got to make sure those are important and those are clicked. And then, you know, if you just want one page, which it is, it's going to export. You can also export this into a, a PNG file if you wish to. And then we'll just put this as a test. But one thing about the PNG files, it won't retain any of the hyperlinks. And then, um, so that's important to, to note. Uh, but these are useful for websites um, as a standalone picture. So just to kind of give you a, sort of an idea of where this is, I'm going to re let, reveal this in my folder. And then the date modified. This is the, um, the PNG file. You can see that it's pretty, pretty clear. Um, and of course, here's the PDF file. Just double click on it, and it pops up in, in Adobe Acrobat. Adobe Acrobat is another application. It happens to be called Acrobat Pro DC. I'm not sure what DC stands for, but um, but it's just called that. And it, 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 Adobe Acrobat it retains all the fonts and graphics as is without having to worry about it defaulting to some crazy uh, font that you may not have in your system and this will show you that see how it's a little finger um, you know points that out as if it's a if it's a real page and so all of a sudden you actually have that going to the website see that that's, that's a hyperlink to the website so in any case that's that's all I have to say for right now I'm going to go ahead and pull this back and um, and recording so I'm going to